This is a 446 pack engine I put together uh, for a customer. It is not for sale. It was uh, specialty built for a gentleman. But it's quite a unique engine I thought I'd uh, post it on the YouTube channel I have. A customer wanted a 446 pack for a 68 charger and hang on before all the purists out there say this you know 68 chargers didn't come with a six pack we we both know that it's what he wanted and so if he wants to put a cummins diesel in his charger i mean he's free and clear to do that too anyways uh he told me what he had he had the six pack setup and he had a couple of 68 blocks and the unique thing about this uh, project from this gentleman was he had uh, when he purchased one of these blocks, 68 blocks, because he wanted an original year block for the car, that he had a set of original 915 closed chambered 67, 1967, 440 cylinder heads. And I said, well, bring them down to me and we'll have a look. If, uh, if they haven't been massaged or worked over, I said, so I have an idea of what kind of engine I might want to build for you using these closed chambered 67 heads. I says, I could make a true quench, en quench head engine out of it if I can find the right piston. And so, well, he brought the stuff down to me. And uh, lo and behold, that uh, these 67 440 915 heads were actually virgins. No one had ever touched them. They were absolutely bone stock the way they came off the engines from who knows when, way back in the day. And anybody that knows big block Chryslers uh, that go back to modifying them and racing them and stuff in the 70s and 80s uh, would uh, kill to get a set of those heads because you can get the compression, range, compression ratio up way higher than you could with the open chamber 906s or any of the series of heads that followed later. The only drawback to them was that... Uh, the exhaust valve was a 160 diameter instead of the 178, but you could just open them up and open up the bowls. Anyways, we decided uh, after doing a bunch of looking, I could make a true quench head engine because I found a piston that had an inverted dome. So this, and that's different than dish. Some people use the, the terminology interchangeably and it's not. The inverted dome is like a flat top piston and the one portion and it's got a dish on the other part of the piston. And so this is why they're called inverted domes and not dish pistons. So the one I found would give me a bang on 9.5 to one compression ratio and I could end up with a, an absolute quench dimension if I zero the deck on this, which I did, of, uh, well, it depends on what head gasket I want to run. So if I run a 39 thou head gasket, I end up with a quench, you know, height of 39 thou. Uh, 44 thou gasket, 44 thou, et cetera, et cetera. And so we wanted uh, the customer, Rick, that uh, hired me to build this. He wanted something that looked basically stock, but wasn't stock. And so I accommodated him. It's got this little engine here. It's a 30 over. It's got the JE pistons. It's got the uh, it's it's got 4340 I beam rods. Um, like I say, the it's a full roller valve train now. We were using flat tappet camshaft. Uh, it was a comp grind that I've used many times before, but uh, unfortunately, it spun. And there's a lot of conjecture about why it spun. It was warranted. Put the next one in. That one spun. And uh, though it's a weird thing, four lifters out of 16 are spinning, which, you know, tells me there's some kind of other problem going around. And the second, time, the second cam under warranty, I didn't use uh, comp lifters. I used uh, another brand of lifters, and it spun again. And say four different lifters. The other 12 had fine patterns, rotation patterns on the lifter face. And so I'm uh, at the, my background is metallurgical. I worked in a nuclear power industry. I ran a quality control labs. I'm familiar with ASTM testing. Uh, we used to make in-core instruments and liquid level probes, uh, neutron flux detectors, that kind of stuff. We used to use a lot of exotic materials. I used to do a lot of testing, grain structures on a lot of exotic materials. And when this, this just reeks of uh, in, uh, either the material coming out from the cam cores are terrible 
or they're not being heat treated process right or the lifters aren't being and I think it's the cam course because uh, just the way these uh, these things uh, wore off indicates more it's camshaft problem so anyways uh, they went out and we decided to go to a roller there's a huge roller in this one right now it's not not crazy exotic because we wanted something that was very livable on the street we want a good manifold vacuum uh, Rick's running a four-corner wheel wood power brake system on the charger. It's a stick car, so we won't concerned about, you know, uh, uh, what size torque converter and off-idle response. Uh, nice Hemi four-speed, 18-spline uh, A33 going behind this engine here. So anyways, I say just to show, there's been a bunch of, you know, a bunch of work done on this. As far as the cylinder heads go, they, uh, I use the... Uh, the 214-181 valves in them, and I just, I, I, I didn't, I, I enlarged the uh, port, or sorry, the uh, chamber volume area, went to 91% and hogged those out a bit, but I didn't touch the port volumes because I want velocity over volume. This is a street engine, and there's no sense making this thing, you know, have to get into the upper RPM range to start really making power and being civil. But uh, like I say, it's a really interesting project. Um, the fact that I could make a, you know, a true quench head engine with cast iron heads, uh, who, you know, just by looking, no one's going to have a clue. So anyways, uh, we'll button this thing back up after I showed you that, you know, we're going to say full roller valve train on this. And uh, like I say, it just basically looks stock minus a six pack intake.